Hello everybody, welcome to Stories by Shelley. So we've got this really cool story today. It's a Cat in the Hat book. Ah, oh, I love Cat in the Hat, don't you? So this one is called, Why, oh, why are deserts dry? Now why do you think deserts are dry? Should we find out? So this is illustrated by our studies, Reese and Joe Matu. And it is written by, I think, Peter, if I remember correctly. Oh, Tish Roddy. There we go. Why, oh, why are deserts dry? Does anybody know what kind of bird that is? Hmm, it's called a roadrunner. I'm the cat in the hat. Hello. And today is the day we are off to see deserts. Let's leave right away. You may think that deserts are empty and bare, but you'll be surprised by the things that you'll find there. Insects and lizards, flowers and snow. Want to see for yourself? Buckle up! Let's go! Did you know that you can get snow in the desert? I didn't. Let's have a look. Why are deserts dry? I'll be glad to explain. There are very few clouds above them to bring rain. Without clouds, there is nothing to block the sun's light or to hold the heat in, so it gets cold at night. The air is so dry, any rain deserts get dries up right away, so they do not stay wet. Without water, surviving in deserts is rough. Plants, insects and animals need to be tough. All living things need to have water. So how do they live where it's dry? I shall show you right now. Desert plants must find water. Some have ways to store it. Roots spread out to find it or reach deep down for it. Shallow roots of this cactus pull water through them. The cactus then stores it inside its stem. So it uses lots of wide roots and stores all the water inside its stem. This tree in the desert is called a mesquite. Its roots reach for water that's down 40 feet. So it's got long, long, long roots till it finds water. The Saguaro Desert is where you find the very big cactus. It's one of a kind. It's called a Saguaro. Saguaro. And I have been told it can grow to be over 200 years old. A cactus, you see, has deep pleats in its skin, but they will expand when the water flows in. It soaks up the water and then quickly swells like a sponge. It stores water in its, some of its cells. Sharp spines protect it. Just how do they do it? They make some... Make sure some animals won't try and chew it. So it's got spikes so the animals don't chew it. And it helps also protect it. The Gila woodpecker knows very well that a cactus will serve as a perfect hotel. She picks a small hole then slips inside. It's cool and it gives her a perfect place to hide. When she's ready to leave, well, I have a little doubt. Someone else will move in after she moves out. How do insects get water? What some of them do is get water from inside the plants that they chew. These desert insects are honeypot ants all year long. They collect the sweet nectar from plants. They store them inside them and then they can feed it to the ants who are hungry whenever they need it. 
So they store the water, which turns into a honey, in their bottoms, in their abdomen. And then they feed it to the other ants. The Namib Desert gets rain, really. And yet fog comes from the sea and makes it everything wet. Here, a fog basking beetle has a way to survive, getting water it needs to help it stay alive. It tilts up its abdomen and water drops soon slide down its body into its mouth, open wide. So isn't that clever? So they lift up, there they are, they lift up their bodies and they collect the fog and the mist and then the little few droplets run down their body into their mouth. Animals differ in food that they eat and the ways they keep cool in the desert, dry desert heat. In the daytime, small animals stay underground. Later on, when it's cooler, they move above ground. This cute fennec fox, furry soled feet, help him walk on hot sand and his big ears let out the heat. Kangaroos lick their arms to help keep help cool off their skin, then dig a hole in the ground and climb in. We asked this lizard how he spends his days. Each morning he's warmed in the sun's gentle rays. By midday it's hotter and it's time to hide. He slips into his burrow and goes deep inside. Then Late in the afternoon, he's back in the sun. It's not so hot now, and the day's almost done. Then he's back in his burrow to sleep through the night. He'll be up with the sun just as soon as it's light. Hawks, eagles, vultures fly high in the air. They stay off the ground. It's much cooler up there. Kangaroo rat never drinks, but she eats lots of seeds. The water inside them is all that she needs. Road runners can fly, but they usually run. They catch lizards and snakes in the hot desert sun. The Sahara Desert, geographers say, is almost as big as the whole USA, the whole of America. Here the crowned sand goose Grouse flies high in the sky, miles and miles to find water, and I'll tell you why. His babies are thirsty and waiting for him, so when he finds water, he quickly flies in. He soaks up his feathers until they are wet. This water is all that his babies will get. They drink from his feathers, which are dry soon. Then he must take to the sky and find water again. So he soaks up the feathers, I mean, soaks his feathers up with water flies all the way back to his babies and then they're able to drink the water off his feathers. Out here in the desert, when winds start to blow, there are few plants to help hold the sand down and so The wind blows the sand which forms into dunes. It makes shapes in the sand like these crescent moons. What is this nomad wearing? It's called a burnous. It protects him from the sun. It is long and it is loose. People called nomads spend their whole lives here. They move place to place and keep moving all year. In the Mogami Desert, plant, plants bloom, grow and die. They but they leave seeds behind in the ground. That's why. When it rains, these seeds burst into flowers so bright. There is a rainbow of colors, a bright, beautiful sight. They will not live long, but before it is over, there are lilies, primroses, sunflowers, and owl clover. Some flowers stay open for only one day. Hummingbirds drink their nectar then fly away. In the shimmering heat of the sun's burning glare, they might think you see something that's not really there. It's called a mirage. It's a bit like a dream. Things you think you're seeing, 
are not what they seem. When you get a bit closer, things fade out of sight. They were not there at all. It was a trick of the light. In a dry, dusty desert, if you suddenly see something green up ahead, so, like some plants or a tree, it's called an oasis. The, where these plants are growing, somewhere in the ground, there is water that's flowing. Some deserts are hot in the sun's burning light, but the temperature falls and it gets cold at night. When the world comes alive with owls, foxes and bats, coyote and rabbits, mice, deer and rats, nocturnal animals come out. they the animals that come out at night time, nocturnal animals. And soon they search to find food by the light of the moon. Before the sun rises, they all disappear. You would think all the animals were never, ever here. Not all de deserts are hot. The next place we'll go is the Gobi. And here you'll find ice and snow. This bacterian camel is happy to meet you. Some camels have one hump. Bacterians have two. If he goes a long time without eating or drinking, the humps on his back start steadily shrinking. They're not filled with water, but instead contain fat. When he can't eat or drink, he keeps going on that. I filled my bathtub and filled up my sink. That's about. At one time, that camel can drink. He can drink 30 gallons of water, and then he can go a whole week before he drinks again. Oh, hey, that's so much water. He fills up a whole bathtub and a sink, and the camel drinks everything. Our Antarctica is the largest desert of all. The air is so cold here, the rain does not fall. This desert is covered with ice and with snow. The ice never melts here and freezing wind blows. It's dark in the winter and cold through the year. Though scientists visit, no people live here. Penguins have a way to survive the cold weather. They get close to each other and they huddle together. Today you've seen things that few people will see and I'm so happy you saw them with me. A desert is true, it's true, is a harsh habitat, but I hope you discovered it's much more than that. No day in the desert is ever the same, and once you've been there, you are glad that you came. I hope you enjoyed learning about the deserts with me today. Wasn't that fun? I really enjoyed it. Maybe one day you'll visit the desert as a great explorer. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, everyone.